Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I don't know if I like that opening. I've done it for like 12 episodes. Eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> it's a bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> I, just, I, I wanted a bit of a hook, but you know. Uh, welcome to this week on War in the Webway. Uh, my name's Ollie. I'm joined, as always, by Alan. Say hello, Alan. Hello, hello, everyone. And uh, thanks again uh, for joining us for another episode. And we are a week... No, it's like a week and two days past the data slate. Yes. So now, um, starting to get a lot of analysis from a lot of different sources around it. We haven't got any data yet. I mean, we, we've had like Not really. half half a, a tournament weekend where like half the tournaments did it and half the tournaments didn't. Yeah, um, so which didn't really show us any anything, did it really? So the ITT was not using it. So there's a there's a time when I'd refreshed the app. I had to try and remember my, all my old rules and hope nobody questioned them because the app was updated. And I was like, uh, just trust me, this is how all my stuff still works. But I'm interested to see what happens this weekend. Um, it'll be the first real weekend. Just a quick question on that. Just a quick question on that. What, did it like, detract from the ITT at all? The fact that, like, I mean, I didn't go, obviously you did, but did it detract from it? Did Were people, like, a bit... Um, Deflated by the fact that they were playing a game that had already been updated, but they were playing like a previous version. Was that was that no, a thing or not? Because it felt like the last ride of the Valkyries. It was like the last, not for Odari, but a lot of the CSM lists will change. World Eaters lists will probably change. Um, other li- other builds will come into it. So it, was, it it felt quite nice. It was like the last dice roll <laughs> I had with my curse, and I was like, this is just going to do this thing. Oh, they're broken. Yeah, but they're not broken tomorrow. It's fine. Um, there's there was one there's one yeah. beautiful moment where uh, I played a game a guy from um, Games Workshop, um, like he as he, he works at Nottingham Games Workshop, and he goes, "Can you can you do that?" And I went, "I can't on Monday, but I can today." And his face is like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> oops." <laughs> I, I think I think if I was there with with my custodies, I'd be like, every time I could have wound, we were playing the old rules. I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> like biting my tongue. So, so there wasn't They're that many. Like, oh, this is not fair. <laughs> there wasn't that many custodians players. The the top factions were overly represented in the teams tournament. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited mm. by this weekend because I think I think the meta is definitely going to change. Uh, it did feel like a lot yeah. of people had adapted to Eldari. Um CSM probably not as much. I think there's probably more favorable matchups there. Um, there's a lot of Necrons around. Um, so there will be armies that weren't touched by the data slate that will still be playing the same way this week. But yeah, for for me, it was the last chance to to use my stuff the way I, I I'd been using it for six months. So, um, but enough of that. Talk about custodies. We've basically been theory crafting and list crafting for a week, right? Does this work? Does that work? Does a mech build work? Does, yes. Does what characters now come into it? What well, Trajan's ought to take? We've been thinking long and hard. And it kind of leads into what this week is going to be about, which is, we touched on the last week's episode that Drakari were going to be this emerging threat, but there's going to, there's there's a fair few armies still around that really, it's, we don't really want to face, but you're going to have to, you're going to see them everywhere, and that's what, kind of this week's topic. It's uh, two bogeymen, two things to think about if you draw against these armies, well, lots of things to think about if you draw against these two armies. Um, so why don't we just get into yeah it? The, yeah absolutely I mean um, I think I think the reason we haven't done like a list you you, you go on YouTube and you see all these kind of like oh, we're going to theory craft a list blah 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 um, reason we haven't done that at the moment is because we wanted to see a little bit of the lie of the land or the lay of the land I should say after the first few weekends of play yeah with the data slate. And I don't because, want to play it as well. I want, I want to play Custodies with the Yeah, team. yeah. So we wanted to have a bit more of the context behind what we were putting on a list because we think it would be more more kind of valuable to more people. So um, we will, we will get, we will, we are going to do it. We just, we just want to have more information and data before we actually go ahead and put that episode out. Okay. But yes, okay. Let's talk about these. Uh, let's talk about these uh, boogeymen. Okay, cool. So first one, Astra Militarum. No, 
Yeah. No, Imperial Guard. Sorry, I'm a '90s Warhammer player. I'm not saying Astral Militarum. Imperial Guard. I, I do that all the time. Yeah. Oh, I just, oh, I just refuse to. But okay, this is interesting. I think people thought this codex was terrible, and some people still do. But they're winning in GTs. Um, Guard of the Guard are in a really weird place at the moment. So, if we talk about the sort of the builds that are out there. Um, pre data slate, it was two or three manticores of the basilisk, lots so a lot of artillery. It was uh, a couple of russes with the flat three extra AP. It was sentinels for scout and take away cover. Two squads of carskin, which are what some of my favorite models of all time. Got very strong feelings about that. And then two units of bulgrins, maybe three units of bulgrins. And it seemed like this list was just doing really, really well. So you had this overlapping um, AP stacking, ignoring cover type shenanigans and then the Kazrakin at 100 points would come down grenade something um, kill it or, or do damage to it get killed in return 2 CP go back into um, reinforcements and come back down like the following turn do the same thing like really efficient points scoring and reinforcements for 2 CP is just incredible um, you can use it on sentinels because it's on regimental units and sentinels count as regimental units and yeah uh, it, f- first thoughts were about about guard. Like we'll get into how to try and take it apart, but I was surprised by how prevalent they are at the moment. Um. I mean, they have a lot of skew, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, you tend to you tend when whenever you go whenever we go into guard, right? And they've got manticores, just like that crap. Um, or whenever they got basilisks, yeah, or basilisks as well. Especially if we're foot slogging it, and charge, yep. yeah. Especially if we're foot slogging it, and what they tend to have as well is they're not they're not stacking lots of infantry squads. But if they've got like maybe you know, if they know we're going to rapid ingress, they'll just use. They may not use the scions in the way that you described. They'll just use them as screen alongside the armored sentinels. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Scions are and, different to Kazakhin. Kazakhin are quality. Signs are redundant. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry that's, that, that's Kaskin, that's it. <laughs> They'll just use whatever bodies they have as screen and push us out. And then um, whatever we start on the board just gets nuked um, with non-line of sight. And uh, it's very hard for us to deal with that. So, because... Go on, go on. I was going to say, I've played Intergard uh, three times, I think, with CSM. And I've won those games. But with Custodies, there's a lot of flat three damage, which we hate. There's a lot of volume, which we hate. You can stack up the AP to get up to the AP two, which we hate. And I just think that once the once the wounds are starting to call, like be caused, it just snowballs. And so, yes, we can do minus one damage. Yes, the wardens can take the four plus, um, feel no pain. But it it just feels like a lot of volume, and I'm not really. So the when I very first started playing custodies. I had a mate called Gavin, really, really, really nice guy, but he played guard, and this individual, I was about to say prick, because he was, he he beat me for about four weeks straight, and I, I used bikes, and I used guard, and I didn't have wardens, but I used Alaris, and I couldn't work out a way to beat him, and this was back in the days where the, uh, the Telamon had uh, two, was it two shot per cannon, strength 12 minus four, Flat three damage, re-rolling wounds, and basically I took two of them and just started picking up his russes, and uh, that was the last time I played him. So like, I know the guard matchup can be really tough for custodies, and I think in tenth, if you start picking up wounds, they've got so many bodies to get through, it becomes a really, really tough, tough match. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 one of those ones where um, you tend to not. Unless we're heavily armoured, yes. right, and we've got lots of armour, we can't go fixed because we can't normally pop their vehicles. Exactly. And yes, if we got into combat, if we got into combat with them, we would, right? I mean, I think there was a comment the other day about, oh, we should be easily be able to um, kill armour if we can get into combat. If we get into combat, yes. If they screen us out or stop us getting rapid ingress, we can't kill their vehicles, so it moves us away from fixed, so we have to do tactical. Yep problem into then guard becomes our if the guard player's got any whereabouts they're just going to use their basilisks to nuke our sisters yep. 
and then the Manticores, the new some of our bigger squads. Now, yes, we can get around that to some degree with um, Axis. That's one squad. Yeah. Right? That's one squad. Um, and what you tend to find is that they just... If we have to commit something to hold or to take an objective off some Sentinels, which is so cheap, then whatever we put there is just nuked because it doesn't matter about line of sight. They just nuke us with the Manticores and they can move Russes ridiculously far and shoot. And then if, if they trade a Russ, trade you know, five man or four man wooden squad with a character, we're still, you know, net loss, right? Yeah. So. so yeah. It just doesn't work on on multiple levels for us. That's why it's a really I'm difficult gonna, matchup. I was going to say, we always trade down with guard. Um, unless we get lucky and spike up with four plus in runs. It's, it's a matchup that's that's challenging to, to win the war of attrition. Now, even if you kill it fast. So, I, I had this issue um, playing against a guard at Christmas. And I could kill one squad. And that went into reinforcements, came back down. 20 man strong still with all, all the stuff. I couldn't get through two or three squads of 20 mans for them not to have the volume so I'd kill one it would stra- go up come back down I'd kill the next one and go back up and come back down and so the guy had 60 um, 60 guys but it's actually 120 because I just couldn't kill him fast enough and then you overlay this with stupid like the stupidity of Borgrins right Borgrins are 80 points for 3 they have inbuilt minus 1 damage they have a 6 plus feel no pain and a 4 plus invun Right. They move six with three wounds at minus one damage built in. Bulgrin Maul, strength seven, minus one, two damage. So it's higher than a than custodian's toughness. So they're wounding us on threes. <laughs> it's, it's a three man for 80, 80 points with 12 attacks, wounding us on threes. Hit on threes, wounding us on threes. And then in, in return, like, yes, so, yes. If we do the guitars to be minus one uh, to hit, like, they're going to bounce off us, but they're. They're tagging us with eighty points. That's it. Oh, that's just, it just feels such, such an unfair uh, trade. I mean, I, I haven't come across Bulgan much, They're everywhere to be moment. honest. Yeah. They are everywhere at the moment. Are they everywhere? Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ones, the, the guard armies that I've played into have just literally been a car park. Now, I know that some people are saying that with the latest slate, that that's going to change and it's not going to be as bad. Um, but the way that they can stack their buffs, the hit, and in shooting, especially and for non line of sight, that yes, that's been hit a bit with the with the um, with the changes, mm. but at the same point, it's it was it was ridiculously um, efficient. Now it's just really efficient. Um, still, um, so I think. And, you know, in, into us, you know, it's, it's one of those things we've said multiple times. All it takes is someone to give us three or four saves yeah. from, a, from a model shooting. Yep. And we fail two. And then the next one shoots and they, you know, we fail one. Before you know it, you may have one guy left in the squad, but that squad is effectively useless. Mm-hmm. Um, because... I mean, they can pick it up whenever they want by shooting at it again, non line of sight. But also, you're not going to be able to kill anything. So, in effect, it just becomes a bit of an action squad. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, any 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 guard player that knows how to do it will just neuter our squads. They don't need to finish them. Just neuter our squads to such a degree that even if we bring one back, get into combat, you know, we're still not. You know, we're not even going to kill a ten man squad. You know, two, two Venetari into ten, you know, fast screen or whatever you said. Yeah. It's ten, ten attacks, right? You're yep. gonna have to put sustained hits. Yep. You know, you you're gonna get ten wounds through, but then mm, it's you're not eight. gonna. Roll. It's eight. Well, it's just, it's just with sustained, right? Yeah, so you're so gonna get hit, hit on twos with ten attacks, it's eight mm-hmm. hits plus. Let's say you spike up two, so that's ten at ten hits. Wound on twos, it's eight. They don't, they don't yeah, yeah, that's when yeah, they, they don't they don't kill a ten man squad. No. So it's um, you could argue shooting would help, but it puts it into perspective a bit around. And I think us us custodians players are going to need to know 
how effective our our bodies are into into these opponents because into other opponents like Eldar and Drakari, right, where they've got five man squads. Yep. We are absolutely fantastic because we've got that redundancy in if we fail a few wounds, we've still got more than enough to kill the squad. Mm-hmm. So we are really good into those guys now. Into Marines, we're really good because they're small squad size. But into squad sizes where it's it's 10 really cheap or even 20 cheap crappy models yep. just don't have enough attacks. We just don't have enough attacks. And if you go into these squads where you do have enough attacks, five-man squads or something, and all of a sudden, the trade is even worse because everybody you add is more than more than ten of them. Mm-hmm. So, so you, you, the, the further you go into squad size, it gets even worse for you. So I actually think there's a there's a whole other problem here, right? So one of the things that guard do really well is screen because they have the cheap bodies. But if if they screen, so they they take Catachan for scout, so they scout out six, and the Sentinel scout out six. Now. You're going to be able to kill the Sentinels in... I'm talking about most Custodes lists here. So let's talk two units of Wardens, two units of Guard, you take Alaris, whatever it is, you want to take Alaris, unit of Venetari, and maybe one Calidus. Like a tank, one Grav Tank, right? Maybe. So the Grav Tank will pick up a Sentinel who's Strap Reserves and comes, and comes back down. Sorry, um, Reinforcements comes back down if he wants to. Or you kill the screen and you might get lucky with a charge. If you kill it in shooting, they re- reinforce them back up and come back down and they're still nine inches away from you. So you've done nothing. In their turn, they advance up so they're one inch away from you and you don't move in to get the tanks. So we've discussed before about the theoretical way of killing stuff versus the practicalities of actually getting into combat. And I think that guard with the basilisks, with just the, the rate of fire and their cheap screens becomes a very, very difficult game, potentially, because you don't like, do you kill the screen? Yes, well, the screen comes back. Do you kill the tanks? Maybe if you can get there, but they're being screened out. What do you do? Now, let's uh, start out to you. What do you do into this match? Because I know what I'm, I know what I'm going to do for this, but what what do you do? Um, it's a difficult one. If I was, if a mate was basically, it's for example, Ollie, if you said, I'm going to run guard, bring an army, to you know, bad mood cafe, and we'll yeah. go through it. And we'll we'll try and do it. I would I would bring um, tanks. I'd bring land raider, maybe a Coronas with a squad of wardens inside. I'd have another warden squad to rapid ingress, and then I'd have um, access with a guard squad, and then just lots of little crappy sister squads. And the principle would be that um, I would be. I would almost ignore their non line of sight stuff. Yeah, agree. And I just kill every, everything as fast as I could. Yep. And if I can kill it to such a degree that I'm killing three, four units at a phase, yep. um, then they can only bring one back, right? Yes. So yeah, yeah. as long as I'm as long as I'm lowering <clears throat> his ability to have board control. That's fine. I don't want to rely on rapid ingress, mm-hmm. um, but I've got the option there to do it. And um, you said it a few times. They only deal damage in one phase, God. The, Predominantly, the, right? So do so. Basically, what, what people are doing with the Borgrins, right, is they're either running one six man and one three man, or one six man and two three man, and they'll put a three man in the middle, make you come and get it, and then put the six man in the middle. And so they fight over the middle with Bulgrins. Minus one damage, four plus in one, six plus feel no pain. Um, and they become a right nuisance, a right roadblock to get rid of. In Trek Trajan would... This, this is actually... A, a six, six months squad on his own, really. <laughs> this is actually a very fair point. Trajan become... He, like, we, we said it last week, and we said it like when we talk about it. Trajan is even more of an auto take here. You have to run. You have to run. Yeah. You, have, you have to run him. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. I mean, the second army that we're about to talk about, you know, that's Trajan's great into that as well. Yes. So I think, I think there's, you know, you know, a week ago Trajan was number four on our like HQ list, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Um, now he's he's oh, number, one. number one. Hundred uh, percent. Number one. Hundred percent. So I think 
uh, into God, the foundation of a list has, has to be migrating away from armor. Now it's migrating away from infantry, sorry, into armor. The problem is, is most of us love to run infantry because the Cassonian Guard are so awesome or the Wardens are awesome. And um, when you go to a tournament, right, there may be like, you go to a GT, you got like 30, 30, you know, 30 guys going to a GT. There may be two or three guard, yep. if that, around us, maybe one or two. So I don't want to build a list for that. Um, because if I, if I just run tanks and transports with you know smaller numbers of troops, I'm gonna absolutely bomb out against um, other yeah, a lot of other armies. So it's one of those weird ones where they're not that represented in the in the meta. Yeah. Um, there's lots of other armies that if we go into if we build a list for, we can do much better into them. But those lists to guard tend to just fall apart. Yeah, I, I, so for me, this the threat of guard is this double grav tank, double wardens, maybe triple wardens, Trajan, two blade champions, two guard squads, and then mate whatever else I've got left of sisters, um, with Draxus. But it's double grav tank, and I think that pays dividends here. Um, and I'll just try and... Sh- yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, the non-line of sight, right, isn't going to do much into... Isn't going to do much into tanks. No. Because they're already on fives. And and the guard squads could be in cover. I'm not, like... Most of the missions are hold one, hold two. And I'm using my guard, like, that way. I'm trying to use my wardens for rapid ingress and push. And if I get pinned down a bit, I get pinned down a bit. But I'm hoping that I can get their russes with my grab tanks. Yeah, I mean, it's guard on one of those armies that if you can get your teeth into them, yeah, then you just snowball. Yeah. Um, I remember at the, funny enough, the ITT last year. Oh yeah. When uh, um, I think it was the f- the first game on the second day, um, and and you put me into guard. Yeah. And that was when their codex had just come out, or was yeah, yeah, yeah. it been out like a month? The ridiculous banner. I remember thinking. One. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was it was you know absolutely shocking, but I managed to get into him, and then I think I'd what I tabled him by turn yeah, four, yeah, you had. and I'm, I'm, I remember thinking like, you know, what, what you know it was, <laughs> and it was purely because um, uh, it was purely because it was just because I'd killed something, I'd then tagged something else, I'd also hit somewhere else. He he couldn't allocate enough shooting to clear me off from both sides, so we just did one, and, and I was just picking up units, and I think that's probably the best way to go with guard. You know, if, I'm going to have to rely on luck a bit here, but if, if you've got like a wooden squad in either side of his army, mm. he's going to line up his shooting to as best he can to go for both. If he bounces with one or two... Yeah. Um, say, for example, a Manticore and a Basilisk, or maybe even a Rossi bounces, all of a sudden, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where I don't actually need, it doesn't actually have that much more shooting left. Mm. Um, and yes, I, I may get absolutely neutered with one of those Warden Squads, but he doesn't have enough to kill two. Um, and that's where, that's where kind of, I see us maybe getting there. The problem, obviously, is what we said multiple times. It's getting you put yourself into a position that way because any guard player worth is 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 kind of worth his salt is going to be fixing you in place with just wave after wave of screen. Yep. Um, whether that be the Sentinel or, like we said earlier, the the Cassacrian or even or even Rossus to some degree or even Bulgren, and then he's just going to be using his non line of sight to shoot you, and it's just going to be rinse and repeat. So the, the, I do want to move on because we want to make this quick. But the one thing I, I think with guard is I can I I'd have to run this game a few times because I can see myself winning the battle and losing the fight by points because all your heavy hitters have to be hitting heavy. If that makes sense, like the sisters get picked up too quickly, so you can't take fixed, you can't take deploy. You have to get into them, like you say. You have to play aggressively, and then you might draw. I don't know. I investigate signals, but I don't want to be in corners. Okay, so now to take an assassin to make sure I get that. 
you might draw, I don't know, um, capture enemy outposts, but how did you get there if the screens are up and the car park's all on his objectives? Like, there's so many bad cards for that guard game that even if you get two Russes, all the cash in, and you basically deplete all the CP, he still will, might will probably be ahead. I, I, I can just see this one being chase, 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 and hope for good cards. Um, yeah, just, 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 just kind of really briefly. How did you beat? What, um, what data sheets did you rely on when you uh, were playing CSM into guard? Uh, so, to a lesser extent, obliterators, the forge fiends, and then um, the accursed. So, what it was was hitting them across multiple fronts, and the the, the, the lists I played into. So, I haven't played into the bully list, but I played into artillery. Chimeras and then Russes kind of thing. So if you pop the Chimera with the Oblitz, you can clear up what's inside of it with another, um, with the Forge Fiend, for example. If you pop multiple places and you've got two units of the Accursed, you then get into the stuff that comes out. So that's how you pick up your four or five. And I basically just pushed across objectives and just tried to tarp it him, tarp it him down. Um, yeah, I mean that, that that's not a luxury. No, <laughs> we have. No. But, 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 but um, that's it's what, interesting. That's why I was thinking double grav tank. If they two take, take two chimeras, you pop them and then you get your wardens into what comes out or wardens into shooting, pushing through, so you get what's behind them as well. Like th- th- there is a play here where you can get five or six units a turn, but you'd be really exposed and you probably don't want to do it that way. But like I say, it just comes down to it. So for me, with guard, it's like not giving up easy secondaries. So it's not going to give up assassinate, for example. And I probably wouldn't build a list with five characters just for that. I might build a list with four. Um, basically, I'm trying to bait them yeah. into taking tack. Cool. Should we it makes to, sense. Should we move on to the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So this next one's interesting because for a long time they're a trash tier faction. And they've become more and more popular. And I played into them two weekends ago. I had no idea what they did and got absolutely battered by them. And this Death Guard. Um, I think we're both in agreement that this could be a really tough matchup for us. Do you, do, I, I spoke quite a lot about the Guard. Do you want to talk about the Death Guard and, and what you see? And... Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's one of those they're one of those ones that that. You know, not the last slate, but the slate before. So not the one that's just come, the one, the one prior to when that. They got, the two. they got big point reductions. Yeah. And they got the and two then they got, they got the, Yeah, which both of them, you know, minus one save and minus one toughness. Really good. Um, Really good into us. Into us are really good. Because yeah. obviously, you know, our, our big thing is durability, right? Yeah. Both of those things negatively affect that. Yep. Then... Look at it and you say, right, okay, well, you know, maybe, you know, data sheet for data sheet, are we better? And then you've got the Plague Marines are fantastic. Such um, a good unit. Such a good unit. And then the extra the special weapons. We are in a unique position to to fight against them because they're hitting a lot of the time on fours because they're big, heavy weapons, right? Especially the heavy ones. Yep, yep, yep. So we can make that fives with the Qatar. Um, so we can kind of neuter that to some degree, but they are difficult to get through. And with the character buffs they have, with the um, terminators they have, you know, the death crowd, with the option to put uh, Mortarian in there and, and his abilities, with the non-line of sight shooting they have, they really um the plague spitters you know the drones yeah, yeah. Plague spitters, you know the drones yeah, you know yeah. they're only a they're only ap1 for like what 90 odd points i think it is yeah, yeah. it's absolutely disgusting um for what they are and those things will clear our sisters with, like they wouldn't even there you know what i mean they're just bang gone um and i think you know, with their defensive capabilities, if we get into a, s- a slugging match, like like I know I mentioned Mortarian, right? If we go into other factions which have a Primarch, mm-hmm. 
world eaters. We can do really well mm-hmm. into world eaters. You know, we, we, we can kill Angon. Angon will absolutely nuke Custodes if he gets into us, but you know, we will be able to kill him. Um, Magnus, we can kill him. It's a little bit tricky with his, with his things, but we can get him. And Death Guard, Mortarion is more of an issue because the units around him are much more doable. So it's not one of those things where you can wipe units around him and ignore Mortarion. Yeah. It's not like what we can do with Thousand Sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to look at them with the wider picture because we can't just clear three squads, four squads, like we can with the Rubikai. Yeah. You know, we can't do that with Death Guard because of the defensive abilities. So so we often find ourselves, you know, not just getting hit by Mortarion, but getting hit by non line of sight shooting and what we can't clear and Mortarion. And um it becomes an issue. And um if we concentrate our forces, then the drones are often clearing our point scoring units and then doing things on objectives and they don't care because it's only 90 odd points or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real difficult one. If we don't take um, Caladius tanks, mm-hmm. they can kind of disrespect our shooting. Yeah, 100%. Because it, they, they can deploy it so that their um, non-line of sight actually has line of sight. But and then, but before you know... I was going to say, sorry, it, go, it, go it, it, it's more than that. Our shooting's a strength 4, right? They're, they're T5. So we're wounding basic plague marines on fives. So we don't have volume from our, our normal guard and spears and stuff. And then it's a 33% chance to wound them. And most of the time, some of them are going to be getting, getting cover. So I've, I played into this list um, at Darksphere GT. And I looked at it and I was like, I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand why this list is doing so well. And the guy I spoke to, and he was like, yeah, it's been doing well for me. It's been doing well for me for a while. And it was... 30 Plague Marines in Rhinos um, with all character support and then a couple of War Dogs um, no Plague Burst Crawler they had uh, um, oh, what was it? Cultists because they're Cultist Scout I think it is and I looked at this and I was like really? Like, so no Plague Burst Crawler no Morty just loads of Rhinos loads of Plague Marines and Plague Marines it's like, no, if you run a 10-man squad, I think only three of them have got bolters. Because the rest of them have got flails, and they've got heavy combat weapons, and they've got... The, their flamers are anti-infantry 2+, plus, anti-infantry 4+. Plus. Like, so they, they go straight through our toughness. So even though they're lowering our toughness and lowering our save, they don't care about that because they've got anti-infantry everywhere. So I think into, our, into an infantry-heavy list, like we talked about, probably is the most common custodians build at the moment. These guys just don't care. And then if, even if you charge into them, yes, you know, it'll be, um, combat's probably where we excel, but they, they can punch back just as well. And AP 2 for 2, that's that's our weak spot, right? That's that's the custodian's Achilles heel. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, you, you can minus one damage it, but if you're... But I, I would argue you're probably going to need your CP in an offensive way with a plus one to wound, don't you? Yeah. And, and this is the thing, if you minus one damage it, you're only doing that in one place. If, they, if three squads are charging you, and you know, you're going to use your CP to interrupt to go to fight first, you're probably not going to have the minus one damage. Um, but, every, oh, and all, all their stuff's got lethal hits as well. Well, almost all their stuff's got lethal hits. So in combat, the heavy plague weapon, three attacks, hit on fours, strength eight, minus two, two lethal hits. Um... Yeah, yeah, it just it just it just it's one of those ones that just adds up. Yeah. And um it's I think the reason why we we've kind of selected it as like one of the um potential bad things for bad matchups for us is that um it'll be it's very easy to get bogged down in this in in, in this army. And if if they have we talk about plague marines, yes, but Death Guard can really stat check you. Yes. Um, this into us stat checks are more the impact they have are more pronounced because we have less units. Yes. So as a result, a stat check if 
you know, we can't go, okay, I've got to, say, for example, kill this high toughness unit over there. I've got four or five units all shooting at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Chances are one of them's going to get lucky. With us, it's, I've got one or two, I've got two units shooting at it, and then if I can get into combat, you know, depending on how well I've positioned or rapid ingress, you know, one unit might not kill it, because if they've got any common sense, if they know that a guard unit's running at them, they're not going to position that high toughness unit on an objective. Yeah. No, yeah. So all of a sudden, you know, say for example, it's a plague burst caller, it's off the objective. Yeah. What, what are they, like 100 and something points, 180 points or something? something like that, yeah. um, I don't even know. So if we... 180. To take a hundred, yeah, if we were to take 180 of our points, which is four guard now, yep. and th throw them into there without their rerolls, they're not gonna, they're not gonna kill it. They're not gonna kill it. You need, you need character support, you need rerolls, you need CP spent for plus one to wound. Um, and then you, you, you may get it, so or you probably will, but then all of a sudden, it's exactly what we said for guard, then the trade becomes. Very negative. Yeah. I, 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 any anything with armor. Yeah, I, I was gonna say like wh there's a few things we could pick on these. We've only picked these two because I think they're in the forefront of our mind. But if if you're running armor heavy, I think especially with this date slate, this, this this one that's just come out, I think there's gonna be more rhinos, more chimeras. There's gonna be a lot more transport, and we're gonna have to do something with them, or you're gonna have to wait for them to get out of the transport and then know you can kill it in return and with rhinos for example being um open top two shots or whatever if you've got a squad of or two squads of plague marines in there they can fire out the top their anti-infantry two plus guns so if you move within range yes it's chip wounds but it's 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 enough to be annoying affecting and then if you come within contagion range affecting your armor save affecting your toughness like yeah, I, I, I don't know how how you win the plague marine, uh, the plague death guard. Sorry, uh, match up with Casodes. I like, I, I can't see it. I could see a way with guard, but I think they're just annoying enough. And if they are taking Morty, or if they're taking the three PVCs with the um, what's his name, the guy who ignores modifiers. Um, I'm just trying to find him now. Lord of Lord of Virulence, I think he is. Is he the one? Mm, I, th I think I think so. Because because there's, not one, be. there's one that ignores the modifiers to not being able to see. He comes down and spots. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but blight bombardment. Each time a friendly death guard model makes an attack with this blast weapon, the target's unit is visible to this model. Add one to the hit roll, and that attack has ignore cover ability. So they bring down a lot of vir vir virulence with three PVCs and make sure you can see what he wants to see. And now you're not getting the um, normal benefit of indirect so their indirect is really strong like you say, if you get anywhere close to it they move off the objective so your guard lose their efficiency and then you just put a bunch of stuff in rhinos and shove it up the board and if you can't deal with the transports and pop the transports, you're basically screwed um, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 mean, I, mean, the, I was going to say the reason for people listening that um, transport armour lists are going to really give us issues is more, sorry, more often than not, we struggle to kill armor yep. uh, in shooting, right, with chip shots. So then we need to get into combat with it. If they're, And a lot of people are playing it so they're touching the armor, uh, the rhinos, behind a wall, behind a small L or a big L, so they can get more distance when they do the movement out. Now, sometimes they'll do it, you know, an inch away from the wall, or 1.1 inches away from the wall, which will mean that you can't, sh you know, touch it and fight through the wall. We've got to go around. But the principle here is that if we get into combat with it and destroy it, we're killing an 80-point unit. Mm -hmm. And then the unit that's coming out can activate and hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think... That's why um, Caladius are so important um, for us, and indeed Land Raiders. Or anything that anything that can pop transports and then allow us to kill the unit inside that transport within the same turn yep. is 
is going to be critical into armies like death. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you sum it up nicely there. I think it's a the dark Eldar is not going to be as pronounced because they've got low toughness and yes. relatively low wound count in, in comparison. Venoms, for example. Yeah, you yeah. can you can reliably kill venoms in, with shooting, especially with Alaris or, yep. uh, or guard on objectives. So, so that's not the issue. But the flip that around and go into rhinos, you, you, you're not going to kill a rhino in shooting with five guard, even with the rerolls. No. Yeah. So. No. You know, ten shots. You're hitting on twos, but you're wounding on you're wounding on sixes. Yep. But the people you're not going to do it. You know, you might get if you're lucky, you've got three or four through, and then you know, worst case scenario, they fail too. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, four damage, and then they they stage. So, I think the play here is still Trajan packs the punch and pulls his weight, but Draxus packs a punch because being untargetable is huge. Um, outside of 18, yeah. obviously, but I'd like again. I'd want to see this matchup a couple of times, but I, I, I'm convinced that if I play this matchup five times, I lose five times. Custodians into Death Guard. Um, yeah, so I mean, as long as you've got two, one doesn't really do anything for you. You no, need two. Need two. Yeah, and I think. Um, but I want to say small units to trade with, but again, even a, even a, oh, what's our. 130.2 um, two man Alara squad. But, uh, if they go into a Death God squad, you know, we're still we're still net loss. You're always... Both these armies, this can be summed up for me, as you're always punching down. Um, and I, I know there's yeah. a comment that says we always punch down everywhere. But, like, there's... If, if, if you look at both Guard and Death Guard, and you go, okay, what do I want to kill? Okay, I'm going to have to commit a lot more resource to get that. I'm then going to be exposed. If I don't commit the resource, I don't kill it, and that kill like that starts to do chip wounds back to me. You may not lose the unit. You may not even lose the objective, but you're trading badly. And so, yeah, I just, I, 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 I struggle with this. I, I, I want to see the matchup. I want to play it out because I just don't know how to win this game. And again, hoping that they go tack. If they go fixed, because they've got a lot more units. Or they want their rhinos going away and doing deploy teleport homers or behind enemy lines and spill out with a bunch of stuff. Like, truly terrifying. Also, don't forget that with Death Guard, they can do grenades multiple times. So one of their characters allows, yeah. allows them to do the grenade strat for free. Um, that got nerfed, I think. You can only do it um, once. But you but you can do it for CP and then you can do it again. Yeah, but I mean, they could do it like six times or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that got heavily nerfed and uh, you know double whammy now we've got the four up feeling pain against that absolutely but it, it's still enough to do chip wounds right so on average six dice get you, gets you three fours if you do it twice you're going to maybe lose a model um, for a CP it's not, it's not bad it's, it's, it's enough to be worried about but to me the, the decent in combat the decent in shooting and we just trade badly into them um, things yeah, to think but about. we don't. Yeah, definitely things to think about. I think with this slate, we've got a lot of good matchups. We'll do a video where we talk about our, our good matchups, and we've got some fantastic matchups now that pre slate were shocking. Well, not shocking, but they were they were kind of like tossing a coin. Yeah. Um. Now they're absolutely amazing for us. Um. So this slate's very beneficial for us. It's really pushed us into a into kind of where we needed to be um and it's a bit of fresh air before our codex but i think with these two factions um we wanted to talk about these because from a competitive standpoint which is what this channel's about when you're going to gts and you're going to rtts it's one of those things yeah you will and and if you're anything like me with my luck, you know, you'll have 20 people and uh, one of them will be Death Guard and you'll get in round one. And you get <laughs> guard <God. players> <laughs> it be, yeah. And it's, um, so it's just one of my, it's just one of the things, you know, just, just be prepared for it because if you're building lists, like I said, to go into something like Eldar or Drukari or um, 
because that's what your local meta is. If you go to an RTT, which pulls people in from further afield, uh, and a GT, which pulls people in from further afield, or even a super major, then um, running into these armies with a bit more armor than you're used to can really, really hurt us. And unless we've kind of got it in the back of our mind, how we're going to deal with it or how we're going to approach it, we can struggle into them. Um, and so we kind of wanted to uh, wanted to raise that and talk about it because we th we think it's quite topical, and it's it's one of those things as well. We don't we see a lot of people talking and building lists since the slate, and I'm not seeing that much usage of Caladius nope. in these lists, and it's kind of um, you know if you can make it work without Caladius, fantastic, right? But at the same point, I feel that to win larger tournaments, having options for anti-vehicle, anti-transports, if you don't have those options, you're not going to win it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's not um, simply put up. Um, and I just my, my final thoughts are the 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 purpose of kind of this conversation, and it is to start a conversation. There's no point not thinking about armies you don't want to face, and then you get to the table and you go, "Ah, oh, crap! I got them round one." Like, you will see these armies. They are tough. They are tough for a reason. They are tough for us. Um, equally, if you go to a lot of tournaments, you'll get paired into round one into something you really want to do. And I think it's a good good idea to do a yay! Look what we can fight face and be happy with now. But um, with both these armies, even with the lists that you like you'll change the way you play. You have to adapt. You'll have to either play it slower, you'll have to find the trades, you have to find how to get your scoring and keep the, keep basically the clock going and keep the, the score count going up and down. Um, if you, you can't wait until you, you're there and then try and work it out. So if you are facing a meta that has a guard player, play him or her. If you're facing a meta with death guard players, play them. Because you want to see this match up, you want to practice it before you get to a, to a tournament. Yeah, and just to echo on that point, um, I had uh, um, a player uh, um, contact me, basically um, say that, um, oh, you know, I, I don't have issues playing against uh, armies. Don't know why you have issues with rapid ingress. Um, you know, I, d I don't find those issues. So basically, what I would suggest people do is, in your local meta, right, or in your kind of local group of people that you know, find the one that, whenever you go to a tournament, is always doing really well, the, the best player, right? And, or the one that with the hardest army, like um, Ollie said, the one you don't like playing, and ask him or her for a game where you say, come with a, the most competitive list and I want to trial a competitive army yep. and and just see what happens if you're not used to playing at a higher level or playing the, the best player in your area then when you go to a tournament and you come up against you know a player just as good as them or even better you'll just get hammered um, because a the nuances with the game but also with regards to you know, the armies that the top players are taking, they're taking them because of specific abilities or specific synergies. And um, it's, I, I can't echo what Ollie said, play what you're not, what you don't like playing or play what you find challenging to play and play it as much as possible. Um, um, obviously, obviously within the confines of enjoy your hobby. <laughs> but... Uh, um, no. The, the, sorry, <laughs> just to butt in, I, I do want to finish this episode. So, if you've made it this far, thank you. Well done. Congratulations. The the thing that I would say, and this is speaking from proper experience here, I can go four one at most tournaments. I'm I, I've got to that that level. But the one is the one I get battered in, and I get battered hard. Like I'll go four one, good games, and then I'll go a hundred thirty, and my placing just goes right the way down. So. If you're facing one of these armies, Death Guard, be it Death Guard, be it Astro Militarum, be it something else you just don't like facing, I hate facing Tau, 
knowing how to get the points, how to keep the game close, will help your overall position, even if you still lose. So play these games with a hat on going, okay, how do I keep this game close? How do I hope that his cards turn? And if they don't turn, how do I just make sure it's a 10-point game, 5-point game, a 20-point game, whatever it might be for yourself? Think, how do I play the army that I love into something that I know it struggles with and I have the best game possible? And I think that you learn more by having those cl- close losses where you've tried everything and the dice just haven't gone your way every time. So that's my inspirational thing for a Thursday. <laughs> listen to it, don't listen to it. Do what you want. And I think we can call it there. <laughs> we'll call it there. All right, guys, if you made it this far, by the way, this is going to be a half hour video and now it's 50 minutes, but whatever. Um, oh, is it really? Oh, God. <laughs> it's been 50 minutes. We're going to, we were going to do a third army, but thankfully we we're like, no, 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 probably twos, twos, twos are on the beat. But let, let us know your thoughts below. <laughs> let us know if, if you play one of these other armies and custodies, what you think about the matchup. If you have played into Death Guard or Guard uh, with custodies, how'd it go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll catch up with you in the comment section. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, you know all the usual stuff. Like I said, it really helps us out. And uh, yeah, and yeah, we really enjoy doing this, and uh, really enjoy interacting with you. All. So um, yeah, until next time. Until next time. <laughs>